Academic Staff Union of Universities calls a three-month old strike. Thursday was annual day of forgiveness in Plateau State. In international news, snow avalanche bury 11, kill one in Kashmir. And in sports, Somalia to host first international football match in 30 years. This is ANN News. I am Olajumoke Olatunji. Finally, there is good news. The Academic Staff Union of Universities has called off a three-month hope strike after a two-hour meeting between the Minister of Labor and Employment, Dr. Chris Ingege, and ASU executives. ASU went on strike over demands for revitalization of universities, academic earned allowances, issues of university's pension management company and other issues. Engege disclosed to journalists that the two parties have resolved eight areas of disagreement. Engege says the visitation panel has been constituted and will commence work in early March. On the issue of earned allowances, the federal government has released 20 billion naira to pay all categories of university staff. The Social Democratic Party has announced it has withdrawn from the presidential race as part of measures to resolve some internal legal issues. The party has now thrown its support behind President Muhammadu Buhari of the All Progressives Congress, APC. The party says it was unable to run a campaign or do any political activity because of the internal legal squabbles. The party says the only option left for it is to withdraw from the presidential race and focus on the National Assembly governorship and state houses of assembly elections. The Allied Congress of Nigeria, ACPN, has threatened legal action against Obias Akwesili, its former presidential candidate, if she refuses to return all funds generated during her short-lived presidential campaign. As a Quesley, a former minister, had earlier declared 48 million naira was realized from October last year to February before she withdrew from the race. But the party has rejected her figures. Ganil Galadima, national chairman of the party, says there is no transparency in her submission, so the party would not accept it. Ahead of the elections, the Niger Communications Commission has temporarily suspended the Do Not Disturb 2442 short code to enable telecom operators to disseminate voters' education information to Nigerians ahead of February the 16th and March the 2nd general elections. The 2442 DND short code enables Nigerian subscribers to bar or stop on solicited SMS adverts sent to their lines by telecom operators. The Commission reminded telecoms to be mindful of existing directives regarding the timing and regularity of such messages and the fact that a temporary suspension is only with regards to the specific messages and voters' education. Niger's former Minister of Justice, Bayo Ojo, has admitted to an Italian court in Milan that he had an agreement with former Petroleum Minister and owner of Malibu Oil, Dan Etete, to be paid $50 million for legal advice, which included fine buyers for the infamous OPL 245. Ojo told the courts that he only received $10 million for the services he provided from 2009 to 2011. Ojo made the revelation during cross-examination at the ongoing trial of former top officials of Royal Dutch Shell and Italian Ajip ENI for the payment of $1 billion made to Etete for the creative but controversial oil block. Dan Etete is a convicted felon. The ex-minister told the courts that he was still hoping to collect the balance of the agreed $50 million. He said he did not intend to sue for payment of the balance. To court matters, the Federal High Court in Lagos has ordered the arrest of former National Intelligence Agency Director General Ambassador Ayo Deleoke and his wife, for Lashadi. Justice Chuku Jeku Aneke gave the order following an application by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC. Prosecution counsel Rotimi Oyedepo told Justice Aneke that the defendant could not be found. Presenting the application, Oyedeko pleaded with the court to declare the defendants wanted. 
The prosecution counsel said the two suspects who had no legal representation in court could not claim to be ignorant of the charge brought against them, as the case had been in the news since it was initiated. The Association of Private School Owners of Nigeria has appealed to the federal government to accommodate private schools in its school feeding program. They made the appeal on Wednesday at the association's inaugural National Executive Council meeting and retreat in Benin City, Edo State. Absence National President Godley Okukeme urged the government to resign its decision to limit the program to public schools. Okukeme says parents and teachers are also taxpayers and should be able to benefit from the program. After so much violence, death and destructions of property in Plaza State, Governor Simon Lalong has emphasized the need for forgiveness in the interest of peace. He also declared yesterday, February the 2nd, as an annual day of forgiveness in the state. He also inaugurated the guardian of a part of the activities to mark the day. The governor described it as a milestone in the history of Plato people. Lalong says it was a day set apart to reflect on the journey as a people and having in mind the various crises that have deviled the state from 2001. Coming up, African stories, South African President Ramaphosa gives State of the Nation address. And later, international news, snow avalanche kills one, trap 11 in Kashmir's region. Watching A N N. If you know fit go internet or follow for Twitter, you know fit snap photo send or get it photo send. That because you they use super lasa. Your phone no they answer. See me see wahala. My brother go get smart for the air. To a smartphone today and get double data for six months on any MTN data bundle you buy. Simply purchase a smartphone from any store anywhere in Nigeria or bring your current smartphone from any network. Insert your MTN SIM card to start enjoying your double data bonus. Offer is open to all new and existing MTN subscribers. Join the largest smartphone movement today. Make it up for your hand. Whether in your house, at your office, on your phone or online, we are there. We have the fact behind the headlines. We cut to the chase with the news you really need. We cover every angle. We are the bigger, better news network. We are African News Network. ANN. Watch ANN News on MITV from a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is Anna News. In African Stories, South African President Sarah Ramaphosa has delivered a State of the Nation address in Parliament. The event was attended by hundreds of lawmakers and dignitaries on Thursday. The President laid out five key points to boost the economy, including job creation, education, poverty elevation, fighting corruption and increase in state capacity. We will soon be promulgating a proclamation that will set out the specific terms of reference of the directorate. In broad terms, the directorate will focus on the evidence that has emerged from the Zondo Commission of Inquiry into state capture, other commissions and disciplinary inquiries. Ramaphosa announced plans to split struggling state power giant ESCOM into three separate entities as a sought to convince investors and voters that it will turn around a struggling economy before an election in May. Ramaphosa also promised to boost tourist numbers, extort selling stakes in state firms deemed non-strategic and increase agricultural output through accelerated land reforms. Chairperson of the African Union Commission, Musafaki Mohammed has urged AU members to intensify efforts for the realization of the African integration process. Faki made the call during the 34th ordinary session of AU's Executive Council in Ethiopia's capital, Addis Ababa. 
This comes within the framework of the 32nd Ordinary Session of the AU Assembly. The AU Chief said realizing the integration process is extremely urgent because of the current rise of unilateralism in the world. He said the African continent must complete the integration process as soon as possible to achieve the common development of the entire African continent. Nos dirigeants ont à maintes reprises exprimé leur attachement à l'entreprise d'intégration. Les exigences... ...liées au développement de notre continent rendent impérative l'accélération du rythme de mise en œuvre des engagements pris. efforts for the realization of the Africa Continental Free Trade Area Agreement. AU figures show 49 of its 55 member states have so far signed the agreement, while 13 countries have ratified it. A minimum of 22 ratifications are required for the AFCFTA to come into force. Twelve other AU member countries are in advanced stages of obtaining parliamentary approval for ratification. During the two-day meeting, the Executive Council is expected to consider key recommendations ahead of the session of the AU Assembly of Heads of State and Government as African leaders are set to gather at the AU headquarters from next week. France has warned its citizens in charge to be extra vigilant after its fighter jets struck a heavily armed rebel convoy from southern Libya aiming to destabilize President Idris Deby's government. French warplanes had carried out airstrikes on Wednesday in Chad, destroyed at least 20 of the 50 pickup trucks the military says arrived from Libya. They said this could be attempting to topple the government. French planes had also struck in Chad over the weekend. The embassy said in its message to its 1,500 citizens in Chad to be more vigilant to prevent any malicious act against them as a result of operations the French military are carrying out in the country. Ugandan health authorities have launched a special pain to wards of mosquitoes in the fight against malaria. They express confidence the new method of prevention will reduce the rate of the disease. Malaria remains a major public health problem in the country, and the paint has what its manufacturer, Kansai Plascon, calls a knockdown effect. Uh, they, they absorb the anti active ingredient through their legs and they become disabled over a period of time they will be uh, immobilized and eventually a knockdown paint is designed to be applied in residential properties as well as public and commercial buildings health facilities and children's centers are expected to be the first beneficiaries the reality of life is that uh, you need to ha take as many precautions as possible. Uh, Anti-mosquito uh, paint is just one uh, vector. We, um, Uganda and government recommends use of uh, mosquito nets, obviously, uh, residual spraying wherever possible. So I think it's just a overall... ...will help them succeed in the drive to make the country malaria-free. According to Uganda's health ministry, Malaria prevalence has dropped from 42% in 2009 to the current level of 19% because of the use of mosquito nets and indoor spray. Now authorities hope the new anti-mosquito paint can help brush malaria aside for good. A young man in Senegal has shown some fine craftsmanship to reinvigorate the furniture making industry by making use of oil drums and used metal as raw materials to develop new models of furniture such as dining tables, cabinets, and even living room furniture at his workshop. To achieve the highly conventional product, he transforms metal and practices the art of upholstery. Baba Kepium, an ambitious and passionate young Senegalese man, is seeking to revolutionize the industry with a new outlook by using metals as raw materials. Okay. 
It all started in 2007. I was cutting a barrel to make a manger for sheep. Suddenly, I was inspired, and I went to do it. I made my first furniture. They were not so good, nobody was interested. I tried again. On the third attempt, I accomplished the feat. In 2008, I started to make furniture in my workshop. Attracted by the originality of the concept he uses to create the products. And to meet the strong demand of his green customers, he hopes to one day put his concept on larger market and even build his own empire. When we return, international news. Snow avalanche kills one, Trump 11 in Kashmir's region. And later, sport Somalia to host first international football match in 30 years. You are watching ANN. Are you sure you want to do this? Adam, go and bring us your husband. Okay, hello baby. We're in this together, okay? Can you hear me? Keep coming forward. Wait, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> you okay, Lee, you're all right? <laughs> Keep walking down. Keep walking to the left, yes. You're almost here. Keep going. You are here. <laughs> wow, you did it. I'm just so glad I didn't have to use my cane to do this. And I am so glad no other man got you before me. Let me be your eyes. We will never stop working to give you a network you can rely on so you can enjoy life's special moments. MTN, everywhere you go. Welcome back. This is in the news and in international stories. The Himalayan region of Kashmir is experiencing heavy snow that has caused avalanches that have trapped 11 persons and killed one. Officials say rescue operations were being hampered on Friday for people trapped at the fire brigade station at Southern Bahia area overnight. A top police officer says six policemen, two firefighters and two prisoners are trapped under the snow. Police say a man died in southern Kokinag area from an avalanche that hit his home Thursday evening while his wife was still trapped under snow. Two other family members and dozens of other residents were rescued from high-risk area Thursday night following the heavy snowfall. The snow disrupted power and communications and authorities have issued a high-danger avalanche warning in many parts of the region. Although Kashmir is divided between India and Pakistan, both countries claim the region in its entirety. Turkey's interior ministry says the number of dead from the collapse of an eight-story apartment building in Istanbul has risen to 11. Suleiman Soli made the announcement later Thursday after emergency teams assisted by sniffer dogs found one more body in the wreckage.
from Wednesday's collapse in Istanbul's Mr. Residential Qatar district. Friends and relatives continued to wait near the wreckage on Friday for news about their missing relatives. So far, 13 persons have been pulled out of the wreckage alive. Officials have not disclosed how many people are only counted for, and it's not clear if rescuers hope to find any more survivors. European Commission President Jean-Claude Juncker has said in a statement on Thursday, talks with British Prime Minister Theresa May were constructive and robust, but the European Union will not reopen negotiations on the Brexit deal. May arrived in Brussels early Thursday to meet Juncker. European Council President Donald Tusk and President of the European Parliament Antonio Tajani for further talks on Brexit concessions despite the EU's repeated refusal to renegotiate. In a statement, Juncker underlined that the withdrawal agreement represents a carefully balanced compromise between the EU and Britain, in which both sides have made significant concessions to arrive at a deal. For May's part, the Prime Minister described the context in the British Parliament and the motivation behind last week's vote in the House of Commons seeking a legally binding change to the terms of the backstop. She raised various options for dealing with his concerns in the context of the withdrawal agreements in line with her commitments to the Parliament. Despite the challenges, the two leaders agreed their teams should hold talks as to whether a way through it can be found that would gain the broad the broadest possible support in the British Parliament and respect the guidelines agreed to by the European Council. But as well as experiencing political and economic turmoil now being compounded by turbulence in its oil workforce, thousands of the country's oil workers are fleeing unfavorable working conditions and poor wages for more lucrative employment abroad. In as Lucia Deemi has more. Over the years, many of Venezuela's oil workers have abandoned poverty wages and dangerous working conditions for jobs in other prosperous oil producing countries like Kuwait, Angola and Chile. Many leave their families behind for opportunities to earn decent pay. Venezuela was once one of the world's top five oil exporters, pumping three and a half million barrels a day in 1998. Today, the state-run oil company PDVSA produces less than a third of that. Years of alleged corruption and mismanagement by the country's socialist government have taken a terrible toll on the industry. And U.S. President Trump's fresh sanctions targeting PDVSA and its U.S.-based subsidiary CITGO will further decimate Venezuela's economy to the tune of $11 billion in exports this year. Venezuela's oil workers have been fleeing the country since 2003. Some experts estimate the country's exiled community at 30,000 in the first wave. Many more are said to have fled under current President Nicolas Maduro as economic problems worsened. They say Venezuela's oil workers have now fled to more than 90 oil producing countries. Working conditions in Venezuela's oil fields are said to be poor. Some workers complain the company has not provided basic needs like hard hearts, boots and gloves. Many say these conditions force them to look elsewhere for opportunities that would afford them wages for a decent life for themselves and their families. Lucy Adeyemi, ANN News. Up next, sport. Somalia to host first international football match in 30 years. Please stay with us. You are watching a -N -N. <sighs> this used to be me. But that was before I got the perfect bag. It's handy and easy to use. All I need in one compact space, just like my MTN Extra Value Plan. I used to get one plan for my calls and then try to remember which data plan worked for me. Roaming was a totally different ball game. Not anymore. I've got the MTN Extra Value All-in-One Plan. If you're a data buff like me, you get extra data with some talk time. And if you like to make calls, you get extra talk time with some data. 
And when I'm abroad, I automatically browse, chat, and call right on the same plan. MTN Extra Value was made just for me. More of data or calls, whichever one you prefer. MTN Extra Value is made just for you. We are on the road every day, canvassing throughout Africa for news you really need. We follow this story everywhere, from every corner of Nigeria to the wide African expanse. We bring you what's making headlines. We connect you with news you can use. ANN, African News Network, in a truly African spirit. Welcome back. This is ANN News in Sports. The Somali Football Federation has confirmed that its under-20 team will host Eritrea's under-20s in a friendly match in Mogadishu on Saturday. The match at the Benadir Stadium will be the first international football game at any level in Somalia for more than 30 years. Investigators recovered a body from the wreckage of a plane carrying Argentine footballer Amalia Salah in the channel and transported it to Britain on Thursday for identification. The light aircraft was carrying the 28-year-old footballer to its new Premier League team, Cardiff City, when it disappeared in January, along with 59-year-old pilot David Eberson. After search operations were suspended, a shipwreck hunter hired by Salah's family with funds donated by football stars such as Lena Mercy found the wreckage on Sunday. So sad. And that is any news this evening. Thank you for joining us. For details on this and other stories, visit our website, nnafrica.net. Conversation continues on our social media platforms, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at NN Africa TV. I am Olajumoki Olatunji. Have a great weekend.